How's it going, everybody? This is Charizard James here with another deck tech for you. Uh, we have a Demir control list. Um, this is from Tian Mafun Upumpa here on Twitch. If you haven't heard of him before, amazing, amazing player. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go over this deck list and play it for ourselves to see if it works for us. Um, this is a standard 2022 deck list. Um, this format is extremely fun really really fun format so i'm going to go ahead and go over the cards uh we have three Jurari disruptions here two negates four flunk one of the most premier removal spells in the format we have two divided by zeros four salt cummings two poison the cup four behold the multiverse two baleful masteries three crippling fear two graven lore two shadows verdict two mordenkainen one of the nice planeswalkers here in this format Blood on the Snow for another Sleeper. Professor Onyx. Uh, we have some lands here. Two of them include a Hall of the Storm Giants. Actually, two of those. Um, our sideboard consists of Lash of Malice, two Disdainful Strokes, Environmental Sciences, Pest Summoning, Mascot Exhibition, and Confront the Paths. Those are for our Divide by Zero um, cards to, to fetch out of our sideboard from those. We have two Test of Talents, three Sky Clay Shade, one Poison the Cup, and two soul shatters so and without further ado let's go go ahead and get into the matches super excited to play this deck in the standard 2022 ranked um i usually like these kind these control decks but i'm not i, I don't usually play a really hard control it's like this with a, with a bunch of sweepers like this deck has uh it's like seven sweepers in it so let's go ahead and see if those end up working out for us Hey, Salazar, full disclosure, I'm still learning the ropes, so thank you for explaining. Oh yeah, I like explaining everything that I do, so hopefully you enjoy uh, my explanations. And uh, I have a competitive background in competitive magic and competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, so hopefully those things uh, translate into something that you can understand and, and work for yourself. Um, I think I'm going to keep this hand because we can cast like all these and Behold the Multiverse can get our black mana. What we will be punished by is if we're playing against another aggro deck, we're probably going to lose. But we do have this, potentially. So I think I'm going to keep it. I would not fault anyone for mulliganing this, though. Alright, so it looks like we're going to... We are playing against an aggro deck with two negates in hand, so it looks like we are going to have a tough time. But we did draw our black mana, so we, we're, we're probably going to flunk earlier than we'd like to. Turn one Swarm Shambler, turn two Emergence Sequence. Okay. Flunk here says target creature gets minus X minus X till end of turn where X is seven minus the number of cards. So in their hand. So seven minus four is three. So this will do three. This will have a target creature get minus three minus three. Swarm Shambler plus this is kind of interesting. But I think I'm gonna. I think now this would be minus two, minus two now. Five cards in hand. I'm gonna take this for now, just in case they cast something that can get negated. All right, definitely negating this one. Make sure I can use those negates because the negates probably not good against what they're playing here. Okay, hit for three again. Let's see if we can negate something else. Get some value out of this. No value. All right, I think I'm gonna flunk the. I think I'm gonna flunk the swarm shambler actually. Decisive denial. Okay, that hurts. That hurts a lot. I'm looking for a sweeper. I think I'm gonna cast this instead of flunking. I do like the payoff though.
Got a Graven Lore. We got an Ice Tunnel. Question here is, I think I'm just going to play Ice Tunnel Tapped. Hold up, Flunk. And Negate. Try this again. Hopefully I don't die. We got a Tanizar Quandrix. Flying Trample. When it enters the battlefield, double the number of plus one clones with counters on target creature you control. Whenever whatever attacks may have the base power and toughness of other creatures you control, become equal to the to its power and toughness till end of turn. So it doubles this, and then I can exile the Tanazar Quandrix, or exile the island. I think I'm going to exile the Tanazar Quandrix because Morrigan Kynan can come down and make a big creature. And that creature doesn't have flying. I like their, I like their deck though. So I'm going to minus here, make a... And then make a 6-6, six, six, blocking this island. Hopefully they can't kill my dog. Please don't kill my dog. Oh, 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 jeez. Orn refuse! Salazar, thanks for the follow. Going for the throat here. Not attacking. That, that helps me a lot. I think I'm just going to make another doggo. Faithful Howl. Ranger class. Okay, this gets negated. Wow. Morden kind of comes down next to a couple dogs and I win the game. What's going on here? I thought I was behind. Okay. I mean, the fact that Morden Kynan can minus twice without killing itself is so good. Now, this is kind of the hand I wanted last game. This hand has no way to make to draw extra cards in it. It only has sweepers. Huh. I think I'm going to keep it, though, since I'm on the play. We can cast this, like, one turn before them. But we, we, we could get destroyed if we play against another control deck. All right. Maybe we won't get destroyed. I should have I should have killed the usher before it attacked. So it so it can't boast. All right, this is where we this is where we're going to lose, I think. If we don't draw a land or we don't draw something else, if we don't draw a land and we don't draw a draw spell, we could be in a lot of trouble here. Because they they'll get they exile my crippling fear. The good thing about this is that we probably have a little bit of time. They only have a one one on the board. They're gonna hit us to seventeen. Seventeen is is a pretty healthy life total. It's gonna give us some chances to draw lands here. But if we don't draw lands, it's gonna be really bad for us. Well, there's a land. We we take we. The, we, we take those. All 
All right, the billion elite spellbinders is probably gonna be is gonna be a problem. We're gonna have to get the six mana now to cast our sweepers. All right, land is great. Land's great. We still can't do anything in, until we draw another land, but um, we're at fifteen. We're gonna go to um, this is gonna put us to ten. This is gonna put us to nine. So we realistically only have this one turn to draw a sweeper because they have this cave of the frost dragon here. We did draw a land, which is absurd. But they could just kill us with this land in a couple turns, which is unfortunate. Professor Onyx uh, sacrifices a creature, so that's not good enough. Um, we are probably going to Crippling Fear. But I wouldn't be surprised if we died to the cave. Oh wow, and a faceless haven. Okay. We're probably dead. Okay, there's that. The fact that Professor Onyx doesn't make a creature for us is is, is going to be a problem. Um, we have to do this. And then this makes us lose a life. It makes us lose a life, but we would go to one if one of these attack us. So I think I'm actually just going to risk it here. Well... Yeah, I think I have to risk it. I could get punished. I don't know what they're playing, but I think I have to. All right. So there's this. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the poison in the cup because it does kill one of their lands. But Graven Lore is so much better. I think I have to kill one of their lands, though. So I have to hope they don't kill me here, which is, uh... Scary. Oh, no! They did do the last point of damage with the Coat Spell Cleric! Wow! Alright. Alright. All right, opponent. Um, now, I did look at the Code Spell Cleric in their graveyard, but I didn't think they could both animate this and cast two spells. But the opponent proved me wrong. I think it's still correct to use Liliana there to lose a life. Because we need a playable card. That card that we got specifically was able to deal with their board and gain us life. I go first. I want to hit my... My opponent's nickname is Demir. Well, I guess uh, we'll learn who the best Demir player is here. The best Demir deck. Based on my opponent's deck, I'm putting Flunk back. <laughs> my, on my opponent's name. Now, I, I think Flunk's really important for this hand, though. Or they could just concede. That that works. Too. I, that was a really good hand. I wanted to see how that one played out. It's okay. I don't know if people do that in this format or not. Just concede. But okay. We're going to start another one. Couple one word names back to back. We have Demir and then Joseph. I think that's a keep. And then next turn we foretell poison the cup. 
Monk of the Open Hand. And then this says, if it was foretold, Scry 2. So the Scry 2 is going to be pretty relevant here. Ice Tunnel, Poison the Cup next turn. Scry 2, stry, scry, try to get a couple lands. Actually, speaking of the, not that last game that we got scooped to, but the, the game before, we would have actually won if we were at two more life. And on turn two, I let them attack with Usher and make a 1-1. One, one. So that 1-1 one, one ended up being becoming attacking me for one and becoming a 2-2. Two, two. So it shows the margins of error with, with a deck like this that I, it was actually my fault that I lost. Um, that 1-1 one, one that was made by Usher ended up going the distance. Really, really important here that... Uh, you kill the Usher before they get a chance to use the Boast ability. What do you think of Morty in Desert Storm Blue Dragon from the new set? I like Morty. It's after we're actually playing it here. Um, I don't think I like the Desert Storm Blue Dragon. Oh, wait. The 5 mana one? I like the 5 mana one. It's not playable in Historic, though, but I do like it. Okay. So, we get the Crippling Fear here calling Assembly Workers. Because that's what I like to call with this card. And then that deals with their board. And then we're, um, due to Paladin class, this costs 3 mana on their turn. So, we're going to try to use it on our turn if we can. Um, but I think we're not going to be able to play anything next turn. So, we're just going to go ahead and... Play the Poison in the Cup for 3 mana on their turn to kill the Faceless Saving if they attack with that. Oh, this is 4 mana now. Okay. I think I'm thinking I'm going to hold off on killing the Code Spell. And I'm just going to try to kill that Faceless Saving. Alright, now I think we can Onyx... But I don't really want to Onyx. But I guess we'll just Mordenkind and Minus and make a dog. Um, Onyx, like, Mordenkind does a really good job at making sure you don't die and protecting itself. Professor Onyx is really good. Is really good at winning the game as your, like, finisher Planeswalker. Similar to, to Fairy Hero of Dominaria. So here, this minus says each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power. So we're just going to make them sacrifice their Legion Angel, I think. Or we could also, you know, Blood on the Snow. Or Shadows, or just Blood on the Snow. And then minus again with Mordenkainen. The problem with that is... Is that it doesn't really do much more than just Professor Onyx minusing. So I think I'm going to do that. Do I even do I plus with Morden actually? If I'm gonna Shadows Verdict or Blood on the Snow on this next Legion Angel, I'm gonna I could just poison the cup actually. But if I'm eventually gonna be using Shadows Verdict or Blood on the Snow, I might as well just like not make another dog yet. And just make the dogs after I sweep. Put a card into your library. Okay. They could just go both attack into Onyx. Okay. They could have killed my Professor Onyx there. I don't know if it was going to be good for them or not. They want to get those Legion Angels up. Okay. So now, I think I'm going to poison the Cup of Legion Angel... That leaves us five mana available to cast either Negate or Graven Lore. So, what, where does that leave us? That leaves us plusing this. Look at the top three. Let's get that Salt coming. There's got to be something useful. Ugh. 
plus this again. Leave me be. Put a card into my library. I think we're not going to need this negate. Make sure to hit our land drops here. We can foretell this because if we don't if we don't need to use this, we can just Graven Lore. Should have used these two to do it though. I like the spot we're in. I don't like the Legion Angels. <laughs> I don't like the Flyers. So I think I'm gonna saw it coming this. If I saw it coming this, do I lose my, my Professor Onyx? Yes. So I think I'm going to let this go, because I have multiple Poison the Cups here. I'm going to use this Poison the Cup in my hand right now. Because it's the most expensive one. That's a good card. Alright, just drawing a lot of good stuff here. Uh, so I can start I can start winning the game now, but the problem is our Shadows Vert kills our own dog. So we're gonna give our opponent the chance to if we do that, we're, if we don't pl if we try to attack them, they're just going to chump block with their coast bill clerics, which is whatever. So, I think we're just going to play conservative here. We're going to plus. No need, to, no need to make another dog. Like this dog's holding the coast bill clerics back anyway, and the faceless haven. So let's go ahead and plus this first. Another, another flunk, which is pretty good. I think I like Divide by Zero, though. Well, I already have a Sonic coming. Let's go ahead and take the Flunk. I have impeccable study Your tiny mind Another Onyx. Let's go ahead and mind. put this one back. And I think we pass here. We can we can Ultimate Morden kind of in two turns. Exchange Hand and Library. Shuffle. You get an Emblem with you have no maximum hand size. But that would mean that our library has, like, no cards in it. Which is a little weird. I think I might do it just to see what happens. Then we might deck out if that happens. And I really don't want to deck out. I think I'm going to keep all the flunks because I'm going to want to kill them with my dog soon. Hey, how's it going, Josh Lucen? You're digging the morning stream? Nice. Alright, so I just flunked this now. I think they could be dead. Alright, dead to a dog. <laughs> Man. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. There's no way they were getting past those two Planeswalkers, right? Especially if I protected them. MTG first supporter. Nice. Let's go ahead and keep this. 
I'm going to try to get some value out of this Gerari disruption. Doesn't mean I will, though. Everyone's playing this. Alright, Paladin class is here, so I can't cast Gerari disruption until turn 3. Which means I'm just going to be holding Multiverse. And see if I can cast it next turn. But probably not. But I can either do that or behold the multiverse, so I think I like that. It especially works out because I'm also drawing land, so it makes Droid Disruption a relevant card, and I don't have to play it as a land. The lady asked me what coffee and Charizard means on my calendar. <laughs> Oh, wow. I, I, I love... You, you, you gotta send me a picture of that in the Discord, Josh. Send me a picture of what it is... Uh, of, of, your cal of your calendar. When are we gonna get a Charizard swimsuit calendar? Ooh. That's, a, that's an idea. That's a good idea. I want to work my way up into Blood on the Snow, but it's going to be a while. I'm going to be hold the multiverse and see if I can, can't get an, an answer to one of these here. I have to do it on my turn because of Paladin class. Definitely not that. I do want this land. When's the Charizard onesie coming in? When we hit 300 subs. And that is right above me on the on the screen there. All right, we could die to these cards because Paladin class is really good, and I think we're dead because we didn't get to six mana fast enough. Yeah, we're not gonna make we're not gonna make it to Wrath here. The combination of Paladin class and Clarion Spirit making a bunch of uh, creatures is is uh, really good. Any mana rocks in twenty twenty two? I don't think so. We just got destroyed. Well, I mean, if we had drawn any of our sweepers there, we would have been super fine. But so I don't think that's necessarily a bad matchup. Uh, maybe I could have been greedy and bottomed the bottomed that land, but I needed six lands anyway, so I might as well keep a land on top. But I could have been greedy and tried to go for a crippling fear or something like that. So you never know if the card on top of the, on the top of my deck was crippling fear, I would have been able to uh, most likely win that game. So all, all, all up to you on like how greedy or not you want to be in situations like that. Maybe it was worth it for me to be greedy, but I don't I don't think that was losable. Uh, I, I mean I don't think that was necessarily always a loss. It's always important when you're playing when you're playing this, especially in best of one, that you take each loss and win with the grain of salt, right? Because it's only best of one, so you're not really gonna get it getting the best of three experience. You don't get the sideboard, you don't get to do anything like that. Especially with like these negates in hand, right? Like negates really bad against what our opponents have been doing. Any reason not to try Sphere of Annihilation? Just curious because it's a 4 mana wrath like Extinction Event. It would hit everything 3 CMC or less in that situation. Um, the reason, the real reason why I'm not playing it is because Tion Mafoon is, was not playing it. I copy and pasted their deck list and I'm playing it today. We have a lot of sleepers. The problem with it is, is they're all really, like, kind of expensive. Like, especially in a situation like this, where I have to sweep and they have one more damage here, that means I'm, they're putting me to one, which is, like, really bad.
But good thing for us is we have Baleful Mastery in our hand to kill the Faceless Haven, so hopefully that gets us there. And they also have five cards in hand after we swept them, so this game's really far from over. What's the weirdest creature type you can pick? I have no idea. We, we can find that out, though. Maybe it's like Penguin or something. That's two faces here. That makes it really hard on us. I'm gonna Baleful Mastery this, I think. Alright, so because they played the 1-1, one, one, we I think we die. I think we lose to the 1-1. One, one. Because we can't block the 1-1 one, one and the Faceless Haven. Huh. Yep, we're dead. The I the problem with this deck is not being able to cast our sweepers fast enough. That's the problem. Like we have sweepers. But usually after we cast them. They have a land that they can attack us with and an additional creature, and then we can't, we can't, they have like a couple windows to kill us, and then we, we can die. Well, our life gain is in a Planeswalker, and it's amazing life gain, but we have to get to that point. But I, I, I like playing against other aggro decks more than I like playing control mirror matches, so it's, I'm fine with this. Plus, I think this specific build is built towards beating other control decks. Like, it has main deck negates. In best of one, I probably wouldn't play negate in my deck. Cause like have you have you seen negate has been really really bad for us X plus one plus one counters on it when it dies. If I had two more, two or more one one counters on it, make another thing. Feels like this deck wants a Maze Mind Tutor. You're not wrong. Is is Maze Mind Tome in this format? You found a creature type called Moonfolk. Nice. Am I just, like, saw it coming-ing that? Sure. The Maze Mind Tutor's M21? Dang it. We can't play Maze Mind Tome. No! They got us. They got us, chat. Can we draw a sweeper? 
I would love to draw a sleeper. Wait. I need you to draw exactly Shadow's Verdict, right? So we're going to hit by, by 6 damage here. It's still good to counter this because when we target their things, they don't get additional 1-1s. One but they had another Swarm Shambler. And another Okra Jelly. So that's unfortunate. It's really bad for us that they keep drawing super hot and we keep drawing super not. If I was them, I would animate this as a 1-1 one -one and start putting counters on their land. But it also makes sense to put counters on the Ochre Jelly. Okay, anything but the Luminarch. So that's kind of, kind of weird. I guess they're planning on growing their Swarm Shambler. Okay, Poison the Cup is okay, but... You know... They have a Swarm Shambler. And they have the cave. They can't use it yet, though, unless they draw it on tap land. I could just board in minus make a make a ten ten, but then they just kill my Morden. I don't think we need Lilith Form Blight. Like, if, if you wanted to hedge that, hedge like certain matchups like that, or, you know, hedge these lands, and yeah, sure, you can play it, but. I don't think I'm, I don't think I want to play it. It's going to be really, really difficult on us. If they draw an un exactly an untapped land. Well, it's every deck that we've been playing against. Us specifically. But... Um... Our... The decks that we're specifically playing with... Or playing against... Is not indicative of an entire format. We could just be... Like... Happening to play against green-white aggro or whatever every... Every match. So if I kill this Ochre Jelly, they get a 1-1 one, one Ochre Jelly. I could just block the Swarm Shambler. But I think I need to block the Luminarch. You're a fool if you think I'll... I don't know. I mean, I mean, there is no Field of Ruin, so like maybe it would be good for Field of Ruin to be in the deck, or, or maybe like one Lilithform Blight. But when they draw their one man land, or you know, if the deck is even playing one, and you draw Lilithform Blight, yeah, like, like if you want to play it, play it. <laughs> like copy and paste this deck, put Lilithform Blight in your deck, and play it. <laughs> like just because I'm playing something isn't going to stop you from from building your own deck, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's still a cantrip. Yeah. Um. And and if I find that these lands are too big of a deal, then I, then I'll play it. Uh, what are we doing here? Oh, oh, you don't want. Okay, gotcha. Um, one second. <laughs> 
while I do this here. I think we're just gonna like make another dog. Make another dog. Let's go. No attacks. All right. So I I think I think Lithoform Blight is a like mate like okay to to give an example with Lithoform Blight to you y'alls. I don't think it's bad. Um, it's a cantrip. So the, so like the floor of playing it is pretty high, which I like. Um, it is sorcery speed though. And we do play a lot of instant speed spells on turn two, like flunk. Um, we also, uh, we also use, uh, we also use our foretell on turn two a lot. Um, so that's also a thing to think about. I don't think it's necessarily bad. And if there, if we, if we do keep playing against decks like this over and over and over and over again, then maybe it's a consideration. But we also have to figure out what are we gonna cut. It might be worth playing a couple of them and cutting like a couple sweepers. But then, but then if you're cutting sweepers, then you're not gonna draw them when you need them. So, um, so if if you if you'd like to recommend a card like that, y'alls, I would I would recommend saying in chat to me like instead of saying, um, instead of saying maybe we want Lither Form Blight in the main deck. Um, telling me, like, not only, not only that saying it's dumb with Field of Ruin, but also telling me why you want to play the card and why it's better than any other card we're playing in our deck and what you would want to cut with it. Then we can have a conversation about it. How's it going, Spirit Chiller? It's fun and cheesy? Yeah, um, it's definitely a fun card. I don't know if I would like to play with it, though, because I don't really like playing with, like, super high variance cards and things like that. Alright, so I think I'm gonna want, wait. Okay, this is definitely dead, so let's take the, the value blocks here. Let's block the Hydra. Hey, Floofies, what's up? And let's block the 3-3 three, three Ogre... No, let's block the Swarm Shambler. I think I like leaving the Ogre Jellies there. You didn't win. I chose to leave. And now they only have Jellies, and we got rid of like the other things that are important. All right, we have seven mana, eight mana now. So now we can start like now. Now we can start like killing the caves with our removal spells, right? I think I was supposed to not play the land and then hit them for ten. Wait, are they dead? If I Graven Lord, do they die? Uh, yeah, they're they're dead, right? Holy crap! <laughs> I did not ex I I did not expect that. I was like, wait, hold on, what? Man, those dogs are really good. Those dogs are really good. Oh my goodness. Yeah, those are good doggos. Yeah, yeah. Those are super good doggos. Hey, look, it's a doggo maker. Maybe we divide by zero here. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. What do we get? After watching, you're convinced to get some more. Yeah, Morty's super good. I'm tempted to get environmental sciences here. So I can just play this and, and poison the cup.
Or a flunk, whatever. <laughs> the only way that flunk becomes bad is if they have seven cards in hand when they play... Or seven or six cards in hand when they play uh, Goldspan Dragon. Alright, we can cast Morty next turn. I'd have loved to cast Morty that turn. What if we just play Sultai and Ramp? Cut, cut some negates and stuff and put some... Put some green Ramp cards in here. I don't know, I just feel like... We've lost some of our games to not hitting our sleepers on time and not hitting our planeswalkers, like, early enough. But in a, in a matchup like this, we're going to want our negates, so it's a catch-22. Am I playing this in? Yes, I am, Triple J. I am playing it. Since playing 22, Sorolf is a slept on Golgari card that is board presence and board wipes for aggro. True. That could be a consideration. Dragon's Fire, Goldspan Dragon. Alright, they purposely played this with two here. I'm going to saw it coming now. And then we're going to poison the cup once it hits the battlefield and hope they don't have, like, two negates. Hey, what's up, Gav the Mad Titan? How's it going? It got countered. Okay, interesting. Maybe they have negate for my Morty? I'm not going to play Morty here because I want to play Morty and one of these cards. So I'm just going to pass. I think I may just do Demir, Splash Green for Sorolf and Binding. Yeah, Binding is a really good card, I think, that we're going to play. I should have killed this before it made in a made a, um, a treasure on attacks. But it's okay. The treasure's still on the stack, so I don't get it yet. Return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So now we're going to flunk this since they have four cards. Since they have three cards in hand, this does minus four, minus four now. Perfect, it died. Nice. Now they have a billion mana still, but at least they don't have a gold span dragon. They have this card, which is very scary. Can I get a Liliana? Ooh, Blood in the Snow. That works. That was an entertaining stack for. Wow, third gold spin. Well, never lucky, I guess. Do I make the dog? I think I just go up here. The entire multiverse is my library. And then I get to flunk. Doing it on their turn because it makes them use their mana on their turn. Because they could have count they could have used their mana anyway on my own turn. So if they had mana to use, I wanted them to use it on their turn. Well, I'm glad they didn't have a bunch of flyers on board when they had the epiphany. But they do have two one ones and a faceless haven now. 
And if they have another All Runs Epiphany, then we can be in trouble. Now you have my full attention. Okay, they didn't have another one, which is very good for us. Let's go ahead and do this first. To control okay, blowing this dough is pretty good here. I mean, it could be even better if they if they kill Mordenkainen. And then we bring one of our things back. Uh, I could just Professor Onyx. Yeah, I'm going to Professor Onyx here. And then, like, plus it. And if I don't get anything, I'll I'll foretell this. We got the flunk. Flunk is gonna be really important for for killing this faceless haven here. Is Morden from D and D lore? I feel like I missed this guy during spoiler season. I, I think it's from D&D &D lore. I don't have too much experience playing D&D, &D, but I'm pretty sure it does. Let's make them attack. Choose attackers first. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and gain two life. They could have... Uh, oh, they don't have a counter spell. Interesting. Another Faceless Haven, that kind of hurts. A wizard and a number of spells bear his name. Oh, nice. That's interesting. Alright, let's go up on Morden first, because they could be playing, fr it could Frostbite it if I don't. Maintain Double Crippling Fear. Don't think I need two of those. All right, I I think I want a crippling fear these one ones because then I can. Four. I think I'm going to crippling for these. Yeah, sometimes you just can't. But I, I think they could have played around it there. Well, I mean, if the 4 thing was going to die to removal anyway, you might as well hope they don't have it. Well, it only guarantees the kill on Mordekainen if I have a card that can't deal with Faceless Haven, but can deal with a 1-1 bird. So, if I'm if I'm killing Faceless Haven anyway, the Morty still can't die. Because it was at 3 and not 2. All right, opponent has seemed to disconnect. Crippling Fear is just too good, chat. Crippling Fear not only put the 1-1 one -one birds in fear, but put my opponent in fear as well. I didn't know Crippling Fear also worked for your opponent. Just their creatures. Unless it's me that's timing out. Oh no. Am I afraid of my own crippling fear?
Oh no! Come on! No! Just let it happen! Let it happen! Okay. Assemble worker, advisor, aetherborn, ally, angel, antelope. Ape, archer, archon, army, artificer. So far, I think Atog is the weirdest one. Orox, avatar, Azra. We're, we're gonna go with Atog. Beeble. <laughs> Alright, so now Faceless Haven can't kill either one of our our prized planeswalkers. I feel like I want to cut a negate in this deck and put in another instant speed removal spell card. Like, uh, I think I want to put another Baleful Mastery in here. But it seems as though our opponent has either given up or lost internet connection. So far, every time I've gotten both of these Planeswalkers out, it hasn't even been close. But, it's the matter of getting to that point, which is a little frustrating. We've gotten past an Imerith and three Goldspan Dragons this game, so uh, pretty nice. Yeah, but there was no there was no need to uh, give them that information there. There was just no need to foretell there. Hey, thank you, Josh. Let's go! Francois. I think I want a couple more Baleful Masteries in this deck. I'm going to play this as a Black Source just in case I draw exactly Black Mana Poison the Cup. Falunk. Well, I guess it doesn't matter anymore because of Paladin Glass. Paladin class is pretty good against our deck. It's like Thalia that we can't kill. I want to divide by zero. Kind of. Oh, I can't divide by zero. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it is very good for a one mana play. Alright, that's a land we wanted for Christmas. doing this because I really need to draw land next turn. If I don't draw land for turn, I'm going to fire this off. And I'll still have a land drop plus Baleful Mastery to cast. <laughs> I know, right, Josh? Another Jawaris. Let's behold the multiverse. Try to get untapped black mana. Okay, two lands. Okay, I, I can't... I can't really pass up two lands here. And then we have to build for Mastery on our turn because Paladin Class is going to give us a nightmare if we don't. Of 
Clarion Spirit. Also, Paladin class with Clarion Spirit is pretty, pretty darn good. Yeah, Ranger, Paladin, and Bard are really good. I played against a I played against the Gruel the Gruel class. Uh, a couple like I think it was yesterday. Yesterday morning on stream. Oh wow. Can you stop it please? Can you can you calm down? It's really, really frustrating to have all these counter spells against this deck. Especially because there's double Paladin class. I can't even foretell this. Oh no! I was supposed to play this as a land. Oh well. Yeah, Domri, Gallia. There's also Clothis. There's Gruel Spellbreaker. There's, there's a bunch of cards. Oh yeah, it's not legendary, true. Oh wait, divide by zero can return the, the monk of the open hand to hand. I could divide the Luminarch and Onyx in one drop, that's true. Hey, what's up, Virgil? Alright. I don't really want to minus the Professor Onyx if I don't have to. Get some chump blockers out here. Buy us some time. I need to just buy time until I can draw a sweeper. I don't mind this spellbinder. I mean, this spellbinder is kind of good, right? Because they have Luminarch Aspirant on the 5-3. And it's also a flyer, so it's 6 power. Which is kind of scary. I don't need Onyx yet anyway. I really, I really need a Shadow's Verdict or a... Uh, Shadow, I mean, Crippling Fury isn't even that good right now. I need Shadow's Verdict or... Or Blood on the Snow. Two Bards in play, you could just cast it for free from Graveyard. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Uh, the Bard class is really good once it gets going. Oh, there's also Domri for the bar for the bar class as well. Domri, Clothis, Galia. Uh, Domri, Clothis, Galia, and what else? I think I'm just ch I think I'm just blocking these now. Let's not take any damage, but for our life total. 
the land. Let's do this to see if we can try to get a sweeper. Flunk is okay. Morty is okay. Uh, I think current gruel is better. I think we should get rid of the flyer. Oh yeah, Grum Gully, that's true. Getting rid of Luminarch Aspirin is pretty, pretty good too, but I think the flyer is going to kill us before any of the ground creatures do. Alright, pal these pouting classes are really strong. It's making everything in our deck just impossible to cast. Alright, they can't hit us with Faceless Haven yet. Paladin Class Ban? Nah, it's not that good. It's good against us, specifically, but it's not good against everything else. We need to draw a Sweeper. Oh wait, I think we're are we Oh, we're we're just dead. Yeah, that card's bonkers against us. All right, I think I think I'm taking out negate. That card has been awful. It's probably good in the sideboard, but it's just not good here. There's two negates like the Saw Cummings are kind of bad, but, like, it's just bad against that matchup. Saw Cummings are a good card in general. Hey, Vor, how, uh, thanks for the follow. And I think uh, instead of playing, like, these big sweepers, we should just play, like, another Baleful Mastery. Or, like, another Poison the Cup. Imagine Ratchet Bomb? True. We could play Sphere of Annihilation. Now, I don't think Sphere of Annihilation is good because it's a delayed sweeper. Like, we play it and then they attack and then their board dies and then they just, they just do nothing. Like, they attack, we play this. But they, they, they play their board, we play this. They attack, they don't do anything because they know you have it. And then their board dies and then they have... Yeah, that's, that's I don't think it's good. I have been... I've not been impressed with this card. I'm going to cut one of these... And I'm going to cut these negates. For another Crippling Fear. Another Baleful Mastery. And another Poison the Cup. I think I'm going to do this.
Also, I kind of want one more divide by zero. Litho, what's li oh, Lithoform Blight? No, I don't think so. Is this the blue black control played by Umpupa and the Italian streamer? It looks the same. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's right here. The name is right here. Hey, how's it going, Gabby? Well, this hand is awful, but we have Behold the Multiverse, so I'm going to keep it. it well, us drawing black mana there is really strong. We're playing against a deck that doesn't care about Crippling Fear, which is unfortunate. It also doesn't care about Flunk either. Is there no Epper Gamer music at the moment? We're, there's music playing. I don't know if it's Epic Gamer music. Great deck. I love the style of pure control deck. I can't wait to play it after standard rotation. Yeah, that, that's the whole point of playing this format, is uh, is that it's after standard rotation, which is nice. Okay, Flunk can't kill this, but Baleful Mastery can. I think I'm going to do it now. Or I could do it on their upkeep. Like, if they have Goldspan Dragon, I'm just, like, super kind of dead. But if I make them use a spell here, then I can't kill it with Flunk anyways. So I think I just have to, like, do this now, unfortunately. Of course they have it. When do they not have it? Double flunk. Unfortunately, we cannot kill this with flunk. We can kill it with double flunk, but that's not good. I think I'm just going to hope they play a couple spells before combat and try to double, double flunk them. But this could be a extra turn spell, and in that case, I think I'm dead. I don't think I have a choice, though. I think I just have to, like, flunk the gold spin now, hope they counterspell, and then if they counterspell, I can kill it with the other flunk. So, see if I see that. Okay, it's not going to work because it only does three damage. So, it's going to do three. It's going to do three, three. And then they're going to counter it. Oh, or it's gonna die. That works too. I guess they have another one. Of course. Then they play extra turn spell. Yep.
And then they attack me, play another extra turn spell. Because they have exactly, they have like a lot of mana here. Play one more. They don't have another one. Doesn't look like we can win though. I mean, those are good, but I don't think we can win. Nope, we're dead. Hopefully Innistrad will have a Demir Dream Trawler. What, is Innistrad known for that? Unfortunately, at the moment, Standard 2022 is only best of one in Arena. Best of three for me is way much better for testing the uh, solidity of a deck. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Teo. I agree wholeheartedly. All right, Crippling Fear is going to be really good here. Dark Blade, thanks for the host. Alright. This is a good slot coming opportunity. Ooh, they're playing Jund. It's wonderful not to run it into the rogues or ultimatum in mono white decks all day, though. I agree. I agree. I like that I'm playing against a lot of cool things. Whoa, Temple of the Dragon Queen. Reveal a dragon. Add a man of the chosen color. They chose red. Okay. I need to save Baleful Mastery for Goldspan now. ETB make a treasure. Other creatures enter with additional plus one plus one for each mana used for a treasure. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so I guess I'm using Shadow's Verdict. Alright, and then they go Red Source Goldspan. No Red Source. Ranger Cloud. Wow, their deck is crazy. Second so Crippling Fear. And then Flunk the Gold Spin. Jun finally does some things, right? It seems like a greedy mana base, though. One mana green spell, two mana black red spell. Little crazy.
I think I'm going up with this first one, so because if I go down, I die to another gold span dragon. Your tiny mind couldn't possibly grasp my reach. Like they're playing Temple of the Dragon Queen, but it's only good if they have a dragon. So I guess they're playing Jun Dragons. But that means they're not playing the blue dragons, which are like the best, like some of the best dragons. They're playing a lot of that card. So I guess it's a treasures deck that's also playing green cards. Interesting. Am I going up again or am I making a dog? I think I'm going up again. The entire multiverse is my library. Okay, I like that I have Sod coming here. Let's see. I also, it's also hard for them to attack because I have Hall of Storm Giants as a blocker. It's like a 7-7. Seven, seven. It also has Ward 3, so it's hard for them to kill it. I can also animate this and Baleful Mastery if I really need to. I, I Is this ultimate even good? Exchange your hand in the library, then shuffle. You get an emblem when you have no maximum hand size. Like, like, you just deck out after you do that, right? Wait... No, I, I think you're supposed to make a dog and then draw your whole library and then kill them with the dog. I think. Um, am I countering this? Storm Shambler does kind of work with Ranger Class. I think I'm letting it resolve, though. I think I'll be okay with the dog here in play. Why did they bolt that? Orcus. Oh, so they're going to try to bring the Goldspan Dragon back. Well, that's a no.
Cool, cool. We got this. Uh oh. Oh, that came off the top. I need to divide by zero to get rid of that ranger class. Make them use all the mana over again. So I think they're dead. The entire multiverse is my life. Man, if, if Mordenkainen doesn't die, you just win the game. All right. Now, if you're watching this from YouTube, I'm gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a uh, recap here. Um, you, if you're watching the, if you watch the YouTube video through, then you notice uh, that we changed a couple cards in here, uh, cut a couple sweepers, up the crippling fears, uh, and put a couple more spot removal in baleful mastery and poison the cup. Um, because a lot of the time, you're going to want to kill those lands that attack you after you've already swept the board. And Crippling Fear is a sweeper that comes down earlier on in the game. We have we're, we cut blood, blood in the Snow down to one copy. Still keeping two Shadows Verdicts here. So we went down on one sweeper. Um, we cut the Negates because Negates seemed pretty middling. If we were playing best of three, we would definitely, we would definitely be playing Negates. But um, Negate is really, really bad in this best of one meta. So this is the deck list that we ended up with. So if uh, if you'd like to copy this deck list for yourself, it's going to be down in the YouTube description below. Uh, thank you all for watching. When we won a lot more games than we lost, so uh, make sure to try us for yourself if you like Demir Control in Standard 2022 or want to try out some new cards that are, aren't in the current Standard and don't have Eldraine in them. So uh, have a wonderful day to you folks, and I'll see you in the next video.